Oh, okay. Ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm gonna play some War Thunder. I do have a 10 minute timer because I tend to record for way too long. I'm also just watching a video. Years. We've seen shoes that allow you to physically feel music. We've seen infinitely repeating dodecahedrons and working displays the thickness of a piece of paper. But this airless paint sprayer right here is up there with one of the most exciting of all for me. Can so I let's just say, you go moved to a place. You left your garage door unlocked one night and you have some very friendly neighbors. <laughs> I realize how niche this scenario is. Oh, Jesus. I can basically fill this tank with clean white paint. Oh, even that's so satisfying. And then this base compartment can effectively suck out all the air and create a vacuum with that paint. Which means that when I spray from here, it Smile. should come out as smooth and as quiet as can be. This is a proper, like, industrial bit of kit. Oh! That works astonishingly well. Like, it's almost gone back to just how the paper used to be. And it's so smooth coming out this hose. Same about that gargling box though. It's such a smooth, even coat of paint. Seven out of 10. I cannot believe You're that an item a like bunch this actually exists. And it actually got delivered to us. This robot can write for you. And I didn't realize I had to build it myself. Okay, that only took us about five hours, <laughs> but it's fully assembled now. So I'm just gonna hand it our weird- This is the shaman, guys. And then we pull up something called the Inkscape software, which lets us design any image we want to, and then the robot can turn that image into a path that it needs to follow to- The shaman's it. actually I know the perfect test for this. How perfect a circle can a robot draw go? Ha ah. That was far better than I thought it was gonna do. There's something very surreal about seeing that happen. It's the fact that, yes, you can just print things in perfect circles, but I have just seen this use a manual instrument and execute that in person. I don't see how we can get more satisfying than that. Give it a nine, just in case. All right, this feels like a challenge. I'm gonna pull up the same photo of my cat for both the robot and me to see. I'll see who can draw it better. Man versus machine, let's do this. Oh this is so intimidating. Not to worry, I did art at school and I... Uh... Didn't fail. Does not look like a cat. Although I'm slightly concerned it's one of those drawings that's gonna come together at the last minute and look incredible. Oh, I just realized what it's doing. The whole drawing is upside down and that that is actually incredible. Maybe I can beat it on speed. The worst part of this is it's not just better than me, it's also faster. So that's what the Axie Draw robot did. Here's my cat. I only have one thing left to say here. It's a good day for humanity. <laughs> Oh, that's you. Yeah, right there. He's more interested in the DVD screensaver. $800. $800 is the price of this clock. It's not made of any spectacularly fancy materials. It doesn't tell the time any more accurately than a normal clock, but it does have one key differentiator. It tells the time with a levitating hand. This ball right here. So we mount it on the wall. I'm really enjoying this LED ring around it. And we basically set it so that right now it's counting minutes. So one whole round is 60 seconds. There's an accessory for this. So you line that up with that dot and apparently you just slide that in. Oh my God, wait, the magnet's moving. Okay, that was too ambitious. We need to do it horizontally. Oh my God. We got it. Can we just mount it? This is wild. I feel like I'm inside of a Harry Potter movie. <laughs> like rotating on the spot. Okay, so check this out. We can set the timer to one minute. Each second it moves along, you can what see the LED follow it around. And the cool thing about this is that you can set one round of this clock to mean anything you want it to mean. So it could count a week, it could count a month, it could count just towards a specific point in time in the future that you're looking forward to, which is a feature I love. $800 though. I know time is money, but this is something else. Getting to the very highest end gadgets now, this is the Miku Formbox. And it's been talked about on the internet as the pinnacle, the literal climax for satisfaction seekers. The idea being that, let's say you've just designed a product of your own, then you can place that product inside of here and use this to create a mold of it to efficiently recreate it as many times as you want. I mean, the outcome is cool and all, but it's more the way that it goes about it that's the fun bit. So our mouse right here is effectively sitting on a vacuum that's going to suck out all the air. It's actually just a Henry the Hoover, but... 
Maybe. And then on top of that is a plastic sheet that is now being heated from a filament above. And as soon as that gets to the right temperature, we're I've gonna got bring the plastic down. Wow! Oh my god. It's created a complete seal around that product. That's the day when we get to actually print the mice as well. How do we get the mouse out? I do actually need my mouse pack. <laughs> is this how I'm gonna use it from now on? Well, the good news is that I can still move my mouse. The slightly less good news is that I can no longer press buttons or scroll wheels. But this is a video that just keeps giving. If you asked a random person on the street to design their ideal piece of technology, I imagine that a printer that can 3D print chocolate would be pretty high on the list. So it comes with these really strange chocolate cigar looking things in the box, which you basically shove up the nozzle at the bottom. And then we just browse the various different folders of things we could potentially print. And you can do chess pieces. I love chess. Let's print a rook. So it's moving both the nozzle and the tray underneath it to create the shape. Look how precise the square is. This is my kind of machine. And it's almost completely silent. And here, is our rook. Wow. So it looks like it's had some trouble with the base of it, but the rest of it is spot on. It's so precisely crafted. But this actually goes further because you can also add in your own SD card loaded with any 3D model you can find on the internet. And apparently it can print that too. So of course we're going to try a Pokemon. Hey, Bulbasaur. see if it can make a Bulbasaur. Oh, it's the inside of Bulbasaur. Didn't think I'd ever see that. And you can tell this time right, the machine's even got the base right. I kind of will wait to see this. One eternity later. Yeah, so basically we ran out of chocolate partway through printing that, so we have a headless Bulbasaur over here. Albeit a very, very nice headless Bulbasaur. But then the cool part of this is that we've managed to print one Bulbasaur in many, many different sizes. It's like a very weird semi-headless family. I'll eat the biggest one. Mm. The texture is so fun. You can feel every single layer is built on the inside. That is something special. Mm. There you go. Bulbasaur for you. Now, speaking of moments of immense satisfaction, I had another one the other day. You might know that when I went to go see Mr. Beast earlier this year, he got me addicted to anime. He showed me a series called Death Note on Netflix, which I finished beginning to end in a month, and I'm currently looking for the next one to binge. Open to recommendations, by the way. Also, isn't it kind of insane how this has actually automatically spread out all the sand? The problem is you can't find half of these shows on the UK version of Netflix. So. Imagine the feeling when I realized that I could use the Surfshark VPN subscription that I already had and already used to encrypt my internet traffic and monitor my email address in real time for any data leaks to just swap my location to the United States to access the US version of Netflix, which did have those shows on it. But the crazy part of it is that this whole Surfshark package together is just $2.49 a month, which split between the seven people I share it with is 36 cents. So hit the link in the description and use the code BOSS and you'll get it not just for that $2.49 a month price, but also three extra months for free on top of that. Fully refundable. You know what? I got the Tesla Electrophone. But not just that. I've actually spent the last six months, one by one, buying up eight of the rarest limited edition smartphones in the world. So let's see if they're worth it, getting more and more expensive as we go. Okay, number eight is the Pac-Man phone by OnePlus, which is now valued at $600. Beautiful box though, wow. We've got manuals and stickers is the first thing, a standard OnePlus charger, the phone, a classic red cable, but then also a secret compartment, which is hiding this bespoke Pac-Man case inside of it. I freaking love this phone. There's a whole suite of custom Pac-Man wallpapers. One has retrofied the icons and the interface. Pac-Man eats the dot as you scroll. This is wild. There's a brand new fingerprint scanning animation. It's actually unlocking so fast I can't see it properly. There are challenges within the phone that actually unlock new Pac-Man themed goodies. There's a new camera filter just for this phone, but that's not even the coolest bit. What do you think to this back panel? It's okay, right? Kind of plain, just a single Pac-Man floating randomly over here, but then you turn the lights off to reveal what he's actually doing there. Crazy to think that this is like the cheapest phone on the entire list. So let's step it up with the $700 Dragon Ball Z smartphone, which is a collaboration with the phone company Realme. Literally every part of this packaging is rammed full of Dragon Ball Easter eggs. I'm not a die-hard fan of the show, but I did used to watch the episodes as a kid and Man, this is taking me way back. Even the SIM ejector tool is shaped like a Dragon Ball. And then we get the phone. What a color. It's a really considered Dragon Ball. And man, this is taking me way back. Even the SIM ejector tool is shaped like a Dragon Ball. Oh, I got killed by a Zinni. 
What a colour! It's a really considered balance between the blue and the orange. I love that little accent right there. This is stunning. And it's it's just the right amount of customised. Like, it's very clear. Oh God, it's all my time. Phone, but at the same time, I'm just glad that it doesn't have the entire cast's faces plastered over it. We've got the usual set of custom wallpapers, and also an icon pack that auto applies to every icon, not just a few that it's been configured for. I appreciate the effort, but that doesn't mean that I think it looks good. But one thing that they've absolutely smashed here is the Dragon Ball Z charging animation that you see when you plug the phone in. Now, I've actually been even more excited about number six, the $800 League of Legends smartphone by Oppo. Largely because if you see my other videos in this series, you will know that Oppo knows how to make a limited edition. Tell me this isn't the coolest smartphone box you've ever seen. So you know the theme here is League of Legends. Well, this rocket is one of the special moves that you can use in the game. So in the bottom compartment, you get a figure. That's the character whose move it is. But slide out the cylinder and you get two further sections. The first has a case for the phone, very precise and matte. And then below that, you get the bullet necklace that this League of Legends character is known for wearing. But this is my favorite bit. That necklace doubles as a secret sin ejector tool to make sure that you always have one with you at all times. Come to think of it, I, I probably wouldn't recommend wearing a bullet around your neck all the time. The other side has the phone, a completely custom 65 watt charger, and of course a cable to go with it. Um. Let me just leave. 